Hello, Quilty friends. Have you ever wondered how you can improve the accuracy and efficiency while you're completing your quilting projects? Well, in this video, I'm going to explore the benefits of starching your fabric before you cut it out. But first, let's talk about why I decided to starch my fabric prior to cutting it out. So, as you can see, I love sewing on vintage sewing machines. So that comes with a couple of hazards. The main hazard is when you're sewing on vintage sewing machines, I use singers, um, the feet dolls are very strong and it sucks the fabric into the throat plate. And so what I was finding was because the regular, the cotton quilting fabric, when you buy it, um, it comes very uh, flimsy in my opinion. So as I'm sewing, uh, the fabric was sucking down into the throat plate and then it was just making a hot mess. So I was like, okay, what is the solution like? I don't know what to do here. So I started to YouTube some solutions and I discovered starching your fabric. And I was like, what? Like <laughs> starching fabric before you cut it. Hmm. Okay. I'll try it. So. There are four options that you can use when you are exploring starching your quilting cotton before you cut it out. So the first option is spray starch. You can get this spray starch in the can and use that. The second option is uh, like a pre-mixed solution. Um, Mary Ellen's Best Pressed is one. The other one is Terio Magic. And then uh, the third category is a powdered solution. There are several manufacturers of those, but basically it comes in like a plastic bag and it's powder and you have to reconstitute it. And the fourth option is to use a liquid starch concentrate. I love this brand right here by Lennon. As I was doing my research and I discovered the four categories of starch, I said to myself, okay, well, I have to try all four categories to see which one works best for me. So I'll save you some trial and error and just kind of tell you uh, what happened when I used those four solutions. So what I did was I pre-cut um, my quilting cotton. This is the yardage that I bought. Um, and this is grunge, which is my favorite, my favorite fabric line. This is just grunge and you see, I mean, you guys know what fabric looks like when you get it. And, and again, my opinion, it's a little flimsy for the machines that I'm using. And then um, this is what it looks like after I cut it into a six inch strip and I starched it. So I don't know if you can tell on camera or if you can hear that, but it just sounds stiffer. So the first thing I did was cut several strips of fabric into five or six inch strips. So here's how I performed this little experiment. I took one strip of pre-cut cotton fabric and the first option I used was to spray starch and I just got a regular plastic bowl. I put the strip of fabric in the bowl and I sprayed it with the can so that the fabric was completely saturated. I rained it out and I hung it out to dry literally outside. Then with the pre-mixed solution, um, I used Terio Magic. And then um, I also used Mary Ellen's Best Press. I threw that bottle away. That's how much I didn't like it. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> so I don't have the bottle to show you. Um, but in a separate plastic bowl, um, I took another six inch strip and I put that six inch strip in and then I sprayed it with the Terio Magic. You got it all saturated, let it soak for a minute or two, wrung it out, hung it out to dry. Performed the same procedure with the Mary Ellen's Best Press, put it in a separate plastic bowl, let it get saturated, wring it out, hung it out to dry. And then I used the fourth, fourth option, which was the um, Linnet, Linnet Starch. So this is already liquid and you can use this actually as is. So you can just pour it in the bowl, dip your fabric in and starch it. 
If you don't like the stiffness that just using it at the 100% concentrate produces, you can dilute it with water. And if you would like to see my secret recipe of using this linnet starch with water, um, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you want to see me actually perform this procedure or this experiment, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make a separate video. So once I had all those options, they were outside to dry. It took, um, well, it depends on the time of day and how hot it is, honestly. Um, when I did the experiment, it was like warm outside. So it's probably like one or 2 p.m. I live in Southern California. 1 or 2 p.m. it was full sun um, and it took probably about 10 minutes to dry. When I say dry, I mean like crispy dry. Um, I've seen some YouTubers dry it, hang it in their house. However you decide to let it dry is your choice, but basically like let it actually dry and become firm. So the next part of the experiment was once it was all dry, I just kind of like played around with it and was like, you know, do I like the hand of it? Do I like the feel of it? And then the ultimate test was just cutting like three or four inch squares and piecing it together on my machine. And that's how I determined which solution was best for me because this one with the linen starch was the best solution for me and my machine because it made it stiff enough to work with and stiff enough not to get sucked into the throat plate because of the feed dogs and it still had a nice hand to it as i was quilting so here's what i learned from the four different categories number one with the spray starch i wasn't a fan of that um it was very fumey as i was spraying it there was there were fumes going around and i was inhaling it it made me cough i didn't like it and I felt like I was like, if I were to do this on yardage, I would be using like a lot of spray cans. So that just wasn't my choice. I wasn't a fan of that. Also, you know, it's cans, it's aerosol, it's the environment, you're throwing it away, that whole angle. So that made it not so appealing to me. The pre-mixed um, Terial Magic and the Mary Ellen's Best Press, again, the Mary Ellen's Best Press was not the best for me. And before I thought about making this video, I, I recycled the bottle. But the Terial Magic actually worked pretty well. The challenge was it does have a scent. Um, and so if you don't like that, if you don't like scents, you won't like this. And the other thing with the Terial Magic is it's expensive. So I think this was like, 14 or $15 and it's only like 16 ounces. And so I was only able to get like one yard completed with this. And so it worked okay, you know, as far as stiffness, but I found it to be expensive and I wasn't a huge fan of the scent. The powder, oh, that was just a hot mess. Like don't even think about reconstituting powder. I'm over here mixing powder and water and trying to get the clumps out. It was just a hot mess. Do not use the powder. This solution is the easiest, it's the most economical. This is, I think, 64 ounces. It was like, I don't know, 13 or $14 from Amazon. And depending on how much water you add to reconstitute it, I mean, you can get yardage and yardage and yardage out of this one bottle. So this was my favorite. So here's what I've learned. Yes, starching your fabric, prior to cutting it is something I totally recommend because in my opinion, in my experience, especially when you are new at quilting, it just makes the experience of sewing the pieces of cotton together more pleasurable. But you will have to experiment and experiment and experiment some more. The reason is because everybody has a different um, preference as far as how stiff they want their fabric. And so again, I recommend either using the linnet starch or um, the Terial Magic. And again, you just have to experiment to get that right recipe for your project. 